Hi folks, form tools are out. Let's walk through how we can set up a form tool and add it to a cam operation in Fusion 360. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. We've got our Picatinny rail. Let's right click, new component, form tool video. L for line. I'm going to sketch on this front plane right here. Now we've got some settings adjusted under our preferences, including not to auto look at sketch and not to auto project. We go over those in more detail. If you go to the NYC CNC website, Fusion 360, getting started. We've got a video on our recommended settings and preferences in Fusion 360 and how to set those up. First thing I'm going to do, sketch, project, project. And I'm going to project in this whole face of the Picatinny rail. And then L on your keyboard. And let's sketch a line over to here, over to here, here, and we'll come down and intersect right there. Now that's the rough shape of the form tool you hope. Whole other conversation about making sure the form tool that you purchase matches the CAD model you're trying to make. The AB Tools tool gives us these dimensions so we could also model it this way. And as someone who used to be in the business of making a product that was based on Picatinny rails, I'll tell you there's a huge amount of variation and obviously the cutter is what's creating the cut here. So that's probably the better way to do it. But this will get us a quick and dirty showing you how you can make a form tool of whatever shape you want to do. So I want to fix it. I know that the AB Tools tool is 0.605 diameter of the whole tool. We're modeling on the radius. So I'm going to click this bottom line and type 0.605 divided by 2. I want this to be a straight shank, so I'm going to hit horizontal vertical of that. The overall the tool length is 2 inches. And so we've now got this full shape. It probably is okay to leave it as is, but I'm gonna get rid of some of this other purple projections that I don't think we need. If I left click, drag about to here and let up, it only selects the things that I fully enclose with my box like so. But if I right click, drag, and what I mean by that is I start the box here and go from right to left and let up, it's going to pick everything that that box even touched. So now I can hit the delete key and what's nice is I'm only left with the purple stuff that I wanted. Purple is Fusion's way of saying it's projected geometry, meaning it inherited that shape from the solid model that, that we projected it off of. Just to give you a better view, if I hide our Picatinny rail, you can see it's got that perfect shape. Stop sketch, we're almost done, which is pretty cool. Before we hop into cam, let's check that light bulb to make sure that we have that sketch visible. It's one of the rare times in Fusion where I want to leave a sketch turned on. So let's now hop into cam, and we're gonna go to Manage, Form Mill. So this clearly is new, needs some work, but we should be able to get it going here. What's the tool profile? Nothing right now, so let's pick that outline. What's the tool axis? I'll just click on that cursor first, and I'm just going to pick this blue line here. So it says sketch segment, that's where I clicked. Compensation point, I'm gonna pick the center of the tool, which is actually here, because remember, we're doing a revolve, we're actually not doing it, but Fusion is, so that is the center of the tool. Now, I mentioned it needs work because Fusion is usually does such a good job of, sh of showing you what's happened and what's happening, and here, I don't really know what I picked, I can't, easily view it or say flip an access or I don't understand why I would have to pick this, but we kind of take a leap of faith, click OK. And the good news is it didn't give us an error. When we were experimenting with this, we did get a few errors. So all I can say is follow that workflow that we just did there. Now we'll do a new setup. Relative size box with no additional. So we've got our material there, click OK. Now at this point I can turn off the visibility of that sketch. I shouldn't need it. So I'm going to turn that off. 2D contour, 
we're going to pick that form tool. But, but one of the things I've noticed is that it doesn't recognize the cutting diameter. So let's right click, edit tool. It seems to require millimeters, but whenever we switched it to inches, we got some pretty big errors and mis scaling mistakes. So this tool is 15.367 millimeters. Click OK. Click OK. Under geometry, in order to pick our contour, I don't want to select, oops, got a, a setup issue here. Hold on, folks. I got to reorient my Z. There we go. So I don't want to pick the whole rectangle. I just want to walk around this front edge. So I'll hold down the Alt key and holding down that Alt key on your keyboard lets you pick a partial chain. In this case, just that left uh, or just that outside edge there. And remember, where we picked the control point was the bottom of the tool. So that's going to match up with there. And we've got the compensation on. So Fusion should handle this correctly. We get a tool path. Uh, we got to have to fix that here, I think. But let's take a look at a quick simulation. First, we'll simulate. Uh, with no stock on, I'll hit play, and then I'm going to pause it. I'm going to orbit around and take a look it's head on, and that looks good. I can hold down with my left mouse button and scrub right to left. So especially what I want to look at is as it enters and exits the cut to see if that looks correct, and it looks really good. Coming in right there, like so. Awesome. Now let's go the opposite extreme. Let's turn off our model, and let's turn on our stock, switch the material to wall paint, which is much easier to see, and we'll go back to the beginning, slow her down, hit play, let's watch it come in to the cut, okay, looks good, looks like we got some flashing air on the bottom there, that's no big deal though. Awesome. So what would I do to improve that toolpath? I'd want it to lead in a little bit more. So right click, edit. I would do a tangential extension distance of say 0.3 and we want the lead in radius probably to be zero uh, or lead in angle to be zero as well. Let's see if that changes us from having, there we go. Now it doesn't have the rounded lead in like we saw here, but rather heads it straight in just to give you an idea what that looks like now. We'll go back to a simulation, no stock. It's just gonna come straight down and walk across that part. I would certainly do this, most likely do this in two widths of cut. I don't know, I haven't, uh, I've not, I don't own one of the AB tools, but it'd be fun to buy one and try it. But more importantly, we've got form tools working. I'm sure there's more to come. I give Autodesk a lot of credit. Uh, they get some criticism as well for releasing stuff like this earlier on in the development stage. But the reality is letting us play with it and use it and experiment and break it and succeed with it is a really critical part of getting a really good product put out there. So be careful with it. Definitely run simulations. Definitely be careful when you're at the machine. But uh, awesome stuff. Thank you. I know this is a super popular request and let's go make some parts folks. Take care. See you soon.